Hey everybody, my name is Radamant and I'm recording a little video of some of the pipe mechanics in uh, Stationeers. So to start, um, this is a pipe meter. All it is is really an analog meter that shows the pressure. Uh, so if I grab my little tablet here, as you can see, it's the same as the pipe meter settings. And at the moment, there is no air beyond these pumps. And what I wanted to do is show you um, a little bit of a pressure test. So these volume pumps are set to 90, 70, 50, 30, and 10. And what's interesting is depending on, um, there we go. Uh, depending on how long we leave this on, as you can see, there's really not that much difference between like 70 and 90 for a volume pump, a uh, volume pumping. Uh, mostly because there is not that much pressure behind the pipes. Um, and then 10, it kind of trickles in. So when you're setting these volume pumps, um, you should sort of check what sort of throughput you have. And the way these are working right now is the monitors are hooked up to these analyzers. So what an analyzer does is it will show you the pressure, the temperature, and the gas makeup, and how many moles there are of said gas. Um, they give you quite a lot of details. Um, that a regular monitor wouldn't be able to show you. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to demonstrate is, or just sort of, sort of show you, um, and let's spawn in a filter here. The next thing I wanted to show you is, or at least sort of detail how filtration works. So when the filter is on, it will pull air from the input, and then let's say this air is a mix of oxygen, nitrogen, and CO2, the waste here will be oxygen and nitrogen because it has a CO2 filter. So these filters will allow only whatever the filters are set up as through the output. So if I had a CO2 and volatile filter, the only things on the output would be CO2 and volatiles. Um, and that's the way filtration works. And when it's off, no air gets through the input. It basically is a valve at that point. Um, the way, uh, air conditioners work is a little different. Um, they're changing, obviously the temperature of the gases. So let me wire this one up. I should have already had it wired up, but it's not that hard to wire it up. Um, just a caveat, I would avoid using these because they are very, very, very power hungry. Um, so the way they work is air of any temperature will come into the input, and I should turn this on. Um, so let's say you have 10 degree air, you want it to be 20 degree air. The waste is any air that wasn't able to be warmed up, and the output is only air at the 20 degrees Celsius. And this range goes up to positive 99 and down to negative 91. I don't want to click it, but just take my word for it. Um, so you can't have extremely hot or extremely cold air coming out of a air conditioner, but it does allow you to very precisely warm your air. Now, the reason I say avoid using these is because they will heat up your, uh, or rather, they will draw a lot of power if you have a large temperature gradient. So like, let's say you have negative 90 degree air and you want it to become 20 degree air. Um, it will take a lot of power to warm that up. And because the only output will be air at the perfect temperature, which might be nice, maybe you want to use it, um, it might blow your cables. So make sure you use transformers or fuses. Um, so the next thing I wanted to show you is the way a pressure regulator works. So what a pressure regulator does is as long as there is gas behind it, it will allow a certain amount of pressure through the pipes. So what we're looking at here, and I might as well switch my tools so you can see, is we have a oxygen tank with, um, you know, about five and a half MPA of oxygen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push um, 8,000 kPa of oxygen into this canister. And this is a good way to be able to late game switch your air tanks out. Um, I would advise doing 8,000 and not something higher because as your canisters can change temperature, if you set it too close to the 10,000 kPa rupture mark, um, it could change temperatures and rupture on you even though you hadn't exceeded it because you have to remember gases have different pressures at different temperatures. Um, so it's going to take a little while for 
this pressure regulator to regulate uh, enough pressure. It's about a third of the way there, or a quarter of the way there for that canister. The next thing I wanted to show is the back pressure regulator. Uh, so what this does is it makes sure that behind on the input, there's only a certain amount of pressure. So basically what it's doing right now is I set it to 3000 and it's going to drop the pressure of the tank plus pipe down to 3000 and put all the excess into this portable tank here. Um, so the back pressure regulator and the pressure regulator works very much in the same way, but in opposite directions. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is although the kit tank has more volume than these portable tanks, they both will not rupture due to pressure. So if you don't have a lot of gas to store, um, you can put it in these portable tanks and clamp them down with a wrench to the kit connectors, the, uh, the tank connectors. And I'll come back on those pressure regulators and back pressure regulators in a second. So although I don't have any atmosphere in this little experimental base here, um, you'll just have to take my word for it. This is how typically you'll set up your coolers and heaters. Heaters are very straightforward. They require some power and the heat, the gas inside. Heaters obviously wouldn't work in a vacuum. And coolers, although this will flash because I don't have any atmosphere, will um, expel cold air out of the cooler and pull it from somewhere. And what it's gonna do here is it will pull air through this passive vent. This passive vent will take hot air and then through the use of the radiators, will radiate some of that heat out in the vacuum and then expel cooler air here. Um, these radiators I wanna mention are not just for cooling. If we had a room that was basically a furnace with let's say an atmosphere and a lot of heaters, uh, gas going through these pipes with the radiators attached would then heat up instead. Um, so they work in both ways. Just wanted to make that clear. All right, so this next demonstration is gas mixers and valves. So we have a tank of nitrogen gas and a tank of oxygen gas. And the way a gas mi mixer works, as you can see, when it's off, there's nothing in these pipes. And this mix is set to 50-50. So what it's gonna do is Input one is nitrogen, input two is oxygen, and let's just change it so it's not 50-50. So input two is oxygen. What should come out of this gas mixer is a 60-40 mix of nitrogen, oxygen. It's very, very straightforward. Um, the next is valves. So the valves are a little weird. Um, for the digital valves, they're more straightforward. If it's not glowing, it's not on. If it's glowing, it's on. So this vent is going to expel my 60-40 gas mix. And the regular vents, although the valve will say on and off, it's basically green-red. That's the best way to say it. And these are analog, old-school valves. But they work very much the same way. So that's how that works. And what will happen is this tank will fill up with the 60-40 mix. All right, so let's see if these... Oh, yep, perfect. So this canister is now exactly 8,000 kPa of pure oxygen. That's how the pressure regulator works. And this tank here is exactly 3 MPa of oxygen. That's how the back pressure regulator works. And this is just whatever gas was left over. Um, so there you have it. That is basically all of the sort of plumbing piping that you will really need in a typical playthrough. If you have any additional questions about parts that I didn't cover or any mechanics that I might not have fully fleshed out, just uh, drop me a line and uh, I will describe them in comments. And I hope this little video has been helpful to you. Adios, folks.